What's up everybody? It's TR with Earth Angel Mushrooms. It's been a while. I'm sorry. I've been busy and I've been a little bit lazy. Um, last video I made was the uh, in-depth colonization of shiitake. I had some good feedback um, from that video and um, I'm going to make another video on in-depth colonization of the other species. Um, but first, if you guys haven't heard of Myco Wizards podcast, um, I just did that podcast with uh, Eric Loman of Cap and Stem. Yes, Earth Angel Mushrooms and Cap and Stem are competitors. But Eric and I are also friends. Um, so if you go to capinstem.com and go listen to our podcast. We talk about uh, you know meeting each other and the industry and how it's changed. Um, so, Michael Wizards podcast, capinstem.com. They're good people. Yes, we're competitors, but they are good people. Anyway, let's get back to this video of in-depth colonization of other species other than shiitake, because I made a video committed to shiitake. Um, specifically 3790. So let's do oysters. And everybody says, well, how long should it take for oysters to colonize? Um, and the answer to that is it depends on the strain. Now we're talking blue oysters, gray oysters, whatever your whatever blue oyster, gray oyster you're uh, growing. There's multiple different strains and there's a lot of good ones out there. So but let's go over some of the fundamentals of what you're looking for whenever you are growing oysters. So right here is oysters. Right here is oysters. Right here is oysters. Back there we have oysters. So of course I grow on 50% soybean hulls, 50% sawdust, AKA master's mix. Um, and if the baseline, you want to start everything from a baseline of what you know. So oysters pretty much across the board, pretty much, and someone's going to beat me up for saying something like this, pretty much across the board will operate the same. And when I say that, I mean the spawn should blast off about the same uh, duration of time and they should be colonized about the same time. Some are going to be a little bit faster. And the biggest thing between the blue oysters is some will fruit way faster. Um, speaking of cap and stem, they have a strain that fruits really fast. This is a super heavy first flush yielder. Um, but let's rewind. Um, you want to make sure that your substrate is hydrated correctly. So then you have a baseline. You know all the parameters. So you're growing on 50% sawdust, 50% soybean hulls. Um, based on dry weight, and these are 10 pound bags, and the hydration level. Now, typically people shoot for around 60. I get it at between 57 and a half and 60, somewhere in there. Um, using fresh sawdust, um, if I get it to the 60% mark, it's on the wet side for me. And it, we could go talk, make a whole video on the differences of growing on pellets or fresh sawdust. We are all growing on sawdust for the most part, um, but they hold water differently. Anyway, let's get back to it. So one of the baselines is what you're growing on. You always want to have uh, a certain uh, knowledge of what you're growing on and it's the same every week. If it's changing every week, if something happens, you never know why it's taking place because you're changing things. So you want the same thing and you want to replicate it every week. So my baseline is sawdust, soybean hulls, 57 and a half ish percent moisture. Pellets will hold more water, um, but I'll go up to 60. And the reason there's a variation is because we're going through a lot of bags and with fresh sawdust, the actual sawdust moisture content will change. And the mill of where you get it from 
changes the blade of which they cut the timber the, the logs with changes so there's it it's a little bit of a moving target plus i'm working having employees do it so they're not going to be nearly as precise as what i am so we want to know all of those variables and that's regardless of the strain species whatever you're growing you want to have a baseline and you want to not change anything and if you do decide you want to change that you want to change it on a small scale because you go big you fail big so you want to learn things on a small scale so you're not wasting money even if you're doing it for a hobby wouldn't you rather have the hobby cost less the answer is yes um, and if you're doing it for a living that means that's taking away money from you taking away payroll money whatever it is anyway so we've gone over baseline 50 50 based on dry weight and about 60 percent moisture check your moisture do a moisture check so i hear so many people whether i'm doing consults or talking um with other growers that don't even know how to do a moisture check Learn about a moisture check. That's a whole nother video. Learn about how to check the moisture. It's not hard. It's not hard math. It's not hard to do. I have my employees check the moisture every day, every single day. And then you know. So the hand test and measuring by volume with water, you never know. You never know. And if you want to get to this level, then you need to know. So do moisture checks. And then once you are experienced in what that looks like, feels like with a set substrate, then I would say you could get away sometimes with winging it with the hand test and the look test and the field test. But until you know via data, don't do it by volume. Don't do it by field test. Do it by science. Do it by math. Okay gonna get off my rant so oyster mushrooms let's look at some oyster mushrooms here's my sticker we sticker every bag oh why and these are Lambert one two three since I'm in block sales Lambert one two three doesn't pin instantly when it's colonized and that helps me because we have delivery days where we package them in boxes and we ship out on the same day every week but they might not get inoculated on the same day every week. Um, it just depends on what the production of that week is. So I need a strain that is a little bit forgiving in when it will fruit. It doesn't fruit near as fast. Um, I referenced Cap'n Stem's oyster strain. Um, I don't know the designation, but it's CNS Cap'n Stem blue, or they'll know if you want that strain and want their spawn, then they'll know what you're talking about. It fruits in 10 days. From when you inoculate the bag to when it's fruiting is 10 days. Now for me, since I sell blocks, that means I have to be on the ball and have those blocks refrigerated at the nine day mark, at the 10 day mark. Um, so Lambert one, two, three, it's a great mushroom. It yields well, it's bulletproof. Um, the perks of it are it doesn't blotch as much as um, other strains. So just because the strain yields really well in the first flush, you have to look at everything. Is it blotching more? Um, which is going to take away that yield. So say if it blotches every 10 weeks, a certain strain blotches every 10 weeks or gets easily contaminated by something else every 10 weeks and, and it wipes out everything. Well, is it really yielding more? So I'm referencing Lambert 123 right here. So Lambert 123, on every species, on every strain that I grow, I know the substrate, and I also know that the spawn should be blasted off. And when I say blasted off, I mean that the mycelium should be growing off the grain by day two. So I inoculate it. And when it's really good, you will see growth the next day, the next day. But you want it by day two. If it does not take off in day two, either you screwed up or something is screwed up. Um, 
whether it be moisture or whether it be the spawn is bad. So day two, you want to see spawn just barely blasting off. So it won't be like this yet. These are trial bags. So I'm doing something different with those. I don't want to reference those in the video. These are regular bags. So these blocks are 50-50. They are at 57.5% moisture and they are on track. So what I mean by on track, the spawn blasted off, which means mycelium took off the grain and started colonizing the block by day two. And then by about one week, you want to see like these, these blocks are pretty much 100% colonized in that the mycelium is through everything. It's wrapped around, it's not dense yet, but we know we're closing in on being protected from contaminants and they're doing good. And you can tell the reason why I'm going over this is because the more you know, the more you can catch things before they happen. So if you know that the spawn hasn't blasted off in two days, something's up. That means you need to do, if you're going to sell those mushrooms, that you should probably redo those blocks or do extra to compensate for those lagging. You already know that they're lagging, so get ahead of the, the power curve. Um, so these blocks, they were done on 510, and they were the substrate that I just talked about. Spawn blasted off fine, and it's 515 right now. So May 15th, we're at five days. So they're actually a little bit ahead of schedule by about two days. They're completely enveloped in mycelium. Now, do they look like this? No, they don't. I don't know if you can see from the video, they're pretty much 100% colonized. There's a couple blocks that have spots that aren't, um, that don't have mycelium in them, but most of them are covered in mycelium. So I want to see that in about a week. And then by two weeks, they're at this stage. So, one other thing you can look at is a feel test. You can actually feel the block. This is still, and it doesn't feel just like sawdust anymore. It feels held together, but it's not dense. It's not hard. Now, if we go to these next blocks, we're done on 5-2, so almost two weeks. These blocks are basically ready to fruit. And for Lambert 1-2-3, 14 days is the magic number. So I want to see a few things with oyster mushrooms. I want to see that they are bright white and I want to see the mycelium climbing up the bag. Now, a lot of people will see, so we, we have some condensation in there. You can see this liquid, you see it moving around. And a lot of people, when you start off, you hear that condensation is bad. Well, we have a block it's generating heat. So we have a heat temperature differential. You can't get away from condensation if you have something hot and it's cooler on the outside. So there's always, always, 100% of the time, unless you're living in another world that physics of Earth doesn't apply, you will always have some amount of condensation. That said, you want to, if you have excessive condensation. If the condensation is being uh, generated faster, more, if it's a different color, and it's going to be yellowish. Sawdust is going to stain the water, number one. Number two, they are putting off metabolites. They're digesting the substrate. So when you start off, you hear the, the uh, thing that metabolites are bad. Well, one, metabolites are going to be there 100% of the time. Two, condensation is going to be there 100% of the time because we have a temperature differential. So oysters and all species, spawn blasts off by day two. If it doesn't blast off by day two, something is wrong, correct it, correct it. Um, depending on the strain, it, they'll either be ready. Some of the strains are like 10 days, others are two weeks. Um, and then you either have to fruit them, refrigerate them, or in my case, ship them, but they're shipped refrigerated. So, oysters. Here we have elms, which is a type of oyster. Um, 
So I do about only about 60 blocks a week of elm and it's on the identical schedule as Lambert 123 Blue Oyster. Um, so swan blasts off in two days, wispy white in one week, dense white and ready to fruit in two weeks. Now let's keep on walking down the colonization room. Here we have some black pearl or black king, whatever you guys want to call it. It's a great mushroom. Yields well, looks like a mix between an oyster and a king. It has a black cap and when you grow it cold, it is beautiful. Jet black cap, has these little scaly things on it. It's gorgeous. So, kings. Well, what did we learn already? One, substrate, 50-50. Two, spawn blast off for everything by day two or something's wrong. But black pearl, this is in the, like a king, trumpet, similar. I let this colonize for three weeks. Now I'm colonizing at 68 degrees. Um, probably in some of my earlier videos, I was colonizing at a warmer temperature, like 72. Um, if you colonize, the warmer you colonize, for all of you people out there that are attempting to save money on air conditioning because you live in a warm climate, you're not saving money, you're wasting money. Because you think that by air conditioning it to cooler temperature that you're saving money on air conditioning because it's cheap, cheaper. But what you don't see is the higher contamination rate. You will contaminate more blocks colonizing at warmer temperatures. So I have, it's probably been the last eight months, I started dropping my colonization room temp and these will fruit in the bag at about little over three weeks. But we want to colonize things as long as we possibly can without fruiting them in the bag because they're digesting those nutrients and they're going to convert that energy into mushrooms, which is what we want. So we want to colonize them as long as we can without getting them to fruit in the bag. So black pearl, I colonize for three weeks. At that point, they get fruited, they go to the cooler, or they get refrigerated, shipped to a customer. Let's keep on walking down the colonization room. Here we have, this is the chestnut side of the room. Chestnuts. So, here's a perfect example of blocks that are on schedule. These were done on 512. It is 515. And you can see it's day three, and we already have significant growth off of the chestnut mushroom spawn. Chestnuts can be a little bit finicky. Um, and I let them colonize for a month. And sometimes you can get away with five weeks. Now they're colonized and let's see if I can find some that are, here's some that are two weeks old. Now they look like they're ready to fruit, right? Well, yeah, they'll fruit, but you're not gonna get great yields. So you let them sit in place and they're continuing to degrade the substrate, eat all that deliciousness the delicious soybean hulls, num, 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 num. And so they go from here, spawn blasts off day two. This is day three, so we're looking really good on these blocks. They're ahead of schedule, and then they sit for four weeks. Why? Because I want them to sit as long as they can without fruiting in the bag. What else we got? I had another video of shiitake. Here we have some kings. I'm not doing a ton of kings anymore, but my goal is to start doing um, more. Kings, I let colonize, sorry, three weeks. Um, and when we're colonizing at 68 degrees, they will start pinning in the bag at week, just over three weeks. So I want them to colonize as long as I can without fruiting in the bag. Um, kings, that's, that's the extent of my kings right now. Um, I'm not growing any of them. Those are all people wanted to buy those blocks. Um, my Ataki. So I had gotten out of all fresh mushrooms for about a year. And I have just recently 
started ramping up my ataki. They are difficult and I have been doing small amounts for about a year to learn them, to learn them to get it under control. And I feel like I'm finally, finally getting it under control. And I will make another video specifically for my ataki because it is complex. It's um, similar complexity to shiitake but way more difficult to fruit, way more difficult to fruit. Shiitake, if you saw my other video, colonization is where it's at. You want everything perfect in colonization, you bring it to the grow room and they will do their thing. My Taki, you gotta have everything good to go here in colonization and everything good to go in fruiting. Um, and if you make mistakes, they won't do what you want. But I've worked really hard on getting them under control. So um, I think that's all the species other than Mayataki and Shiitake in here. I'm Lion's Mane. Lion's Mane will pin in the bag um, at day 10 and sometimes shorter than that. So these are 100% colonized blocks. When you start growing Lion's Mane, one, the mycelium is so microscopic and wispy that when you start growing it, you're like, I don't see anything, I don't see anything. And then all of a sudden you start seeing mushrooms form. As you grow it more, you'll learn that this is what a fully colonized block of lion's mane looks like. And it looks different when you're growing it on different substrates. So if you're using pellets, um, it will look more dense white. When you're using fresh sawdust, this is it. You probably can't see in the video, you can see a little bit of grayness off white, but it is completely enveloped in mycelium and it goes straight from that to pinning. And when you grow lion's mane on 50% soybean holes, 50% um, sawdust, they kill it, as do most of the mushrooms. <clears throat> so, all of my species other than shiitake and maitake are on 50-50 master's mix. Um, I did a video on shiitake. I'm going to do a video on maitake and I'll put a link to the podcast in the description. Myco Wizards podcast. Myco Wizards podcast. Me and Eric from Cap and Stem, Maine Cap and Stem, um, talked for a couple hours about all kinds of stuff. Um, definitely different than doing a YouTube video. You'll get to see a little bit of different side of T.R. Davis for sure. I guess that's the more realistic side. Um, we both started together um, about the same time. We've known each other since we were both eaten with our hands, so to speak. Um, it was a great time. I'd like to thank Eric publicly for inviting me. It was a great time doing that. Michael Wizards podcast and go to capinstem.com. Yes, we're competitors, but we're also friends. You'll hear us talk some about that. Anyway, um, I don't think I forgot anything. If I did, I've tried to do better about answering comments. If I forgot something, um, put it in the comments and I'll try to answer your question. Hopefully everybody is having a good weekend keep growing mushrooms. If you liked this video, go ahead and inoculate that like button. If you like my channel, go ahead and harvest that subscribe button. Anyway, have a good weekend. Stay motivated. Keep growing mushrooms and we'll talk to you later.